Thanks guys for coming up today for watching this uh, talk about tabletop RPGs and crafting for it. Um, first of all I want to say thanks to the AdventureCon guys for organising this. It's amazing. The, the stuff downstairs and everything has been, has been just brilliant and it's been so much fun. And um, I'm delighted to be able to, to do this and talk to you about the, this thing, that this, this hobby that we're so passionate about. Um, so first off, <laughs> here we go. We had a little technical difficulty with our... Uh, Google Slides, so I'm going to do it a little bit weirder on that. So a little bit about me. My name is Barry. Uh, I'm from Connemara. I've been playing Dungeons & Dragons and role-playing games since the 1990s. So I've been at it a long time, and most of that time was theatre of the mind. There was no this stuff. There was no minis. There was no terrain, that kind of stuff. This is fairly new part of the game. Um, so when I got into the group that I'm in now, um, or actually the last group, we did a little bit of it as well, but in the, in the group I'm with now, I really got started getting into it. I really wanted to elevate the game and, and give it some more um, visual uh, aspects. Um, so that's where I came from, and that's wh wh how much I've been doing this um, crafting stuff. So I've only been about a year and a half at it, so I'm not doing it an awful long time. And the reason I started doing it is, is, was really simple. We were playing Dungeons & Dragons, and we were using a whiteboard and we were using dice to in indicate where different players were and we were doing that, that kind of stuff and it was fine, it was grand, it was fun. Um, but I had such a group, good group of players and they're so much fun to play with that I really wanted to do everything in my power to hold them together. And for that reason I wanted to elevate the story, I wanted to bring it up a little bit, I wanted them to be able to see what was going on on the, in the, on the battlefields and so on. And I started looking into how do you do this crafting stuff. And I uh, started off with bits of paper, moved from paper to uh, car cardboard and uh, foam and then <laughs> woodworking came in at the end. So it is a slippery slope. If you do start thinking about going down this road, it can be dangerous. You'll end up doing actual work. So just be careful of that. Um, so that's how, that's how it came to be. And this is a question that people ask all the time when it comes to crafting and it comes to stuff on the table for tabletop games. What's wrong with theatre of the mind? Because of course, in the, the early days, like I was saying, the early days in Dungeons and & Dragons and all these tabletop games, it was theatre of the mind because they didn't have this stuff. So everything was theatre of the mind. I still use theatre of the mind in my game. It's still vast, vastly, vastly, really, really important in it. And you don't need everything to have a set piece. You don't need everything to have minis and stuff like that. So your adventurers are finished with their day's adventure and they've cleared their dungeon. They come back to the town. They're going into the tavern for a bite to eat and a sleep. You don't need to have the tavern and the innkeeper and the musicians then there and, and this is where you're talking because they're just talking. So I always say like social interactions, theater of the mind. Really simple combat can be theater of the mind as well. You don't need that. Where this stuff really comes into its own is when you have several enemies against a party of several players. So just an example of that would be your party comes to a clearing in the woods. There are some trees, there's a rock there. An ogre comes through the trees, what are you gonna do? And then the rogue in the party says, I'm gonna hide behind the rock you said was there. And as a GM you're going, well, well no actually, it's, 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 a, it's just a rock, and it's a small rock. And the, the, the rogue is going, well, I thought it was a big rock. I was going to hide behind it. So there's a disconnect between what you're telling them and what they see and in their mind. So what this stuff does, so for example, if I put uh, terrain down and I have this rock there, your mini, which is this big, knows, oh yeah, I can hide behind that and the enemy won't see me. So it gives that little bit of clarity. And again, like I said, if you describe a scene, the players might forget that you said there was a tree or there was a rock or whatever it happens to be. When they see it on the table, they go, oh, can I climb that tree and hide and shoot arrows from the tree? And you say, well, absolutely, it's there. You can go ahead and try and climb the tree and shoot arrows from there. So it gives them something that they can use. And that's what I mean about elevating the story. Because it goes from being, I shoot my arrow at the, the enemy you described. Oh, you roll your dice, you hit, you hit the enemy, you did the damage. It goes from that to being, I'm going to jump off this table and jump over the bar or, you know, use the barrels or all that kind of stuff. It adds to the story, it elevates the story, and that's what all this is about. It just brings your story up another level. Um, so there's nothing wrong with theater of the mind, but this stuff definitely has its place. So then, we get to when you're crafting, where do you get all the stuff? Because there is, you can see from the table here, there, there, there's a lot of stuff. But in actuality, probably 90% of this stuff on the table here was made from one single sheet of XPS foam bought from a, a hardware shop. 90% of it was made of that one sheet of foam. Um, and the foam is the stuff that we make most of our crafting stuff with. So 
these, this stonework here, that's the same foam as this rock, the same foam as this terrain, this wood, all of the stuff there, the pillars, everything is made from that same foam. Uh, so one of the things that we're talking about when we're talking about crafting for the, for the tabletop role-playing games, and certainly for today, we're talking about how you don't need a lot of money and you don't need artistry, all right? Artistic skill is definitely not necessary, and I can tell you that because I am not an artist, and I, I've never been able to even colour within the lines in the colouring book very well, so never mind that anything else. But I was able to make everything on this table here with just YouTube and, and to what I lack in artistic ability, I make up for enthusiasm. It's essentially what it is. And just a bit of patience and stuff like that, you will, you're will you able to make this stuff. So there is a lot of stuff. So I've got a list, small list here. So the big one is the XPS phone, because like I said, that's our building block for nearly everything. Like I said, I bought mine from a hardware shop. It's a big sheet, eight by four. 1.2 meters by 2.4 meters for those for metric and it's kingspan you'll see a picture in a while it's kingspan foam for houses now the problem with it is you can buy crafting foam a little bit more expensive this sheet has glue paper and foil on both sides so when you're crafting with it you need to peel that off and again there'll be photographs of that later as well but once you've done that you've got foam and it's good foam it, it holds the impressions and stuff like that no problem so it's really really good Tools, 90% of the tools I have, I bought in Mr. Price. Mr. Price is a godsend. It has so much stuff in it. My paints and a lot of the, the bits and bobs that I'll come to, Mr. Price as well. One or two of the tools I spent a little bit more money on. Um, my X-Acto knife, the craft, the small sharp crafting knife. I spent a little bit of money on that because I wanted to make sure it was a good one. I got it from Dungeons and Donuts. Um, and it is a very good one. And I bought a few bits from, from actual hardware shops as well, like the, the box cutting knives and the blades and those again. Because anything that's sharp, you want it to be good quality. That's, that's one thing I have learned from, from doing this. Uh, but everything else, Mr. Price, you don't need to spend a fortune. And I've been adding to it over time. I'm sure if I went out and bought every tool and paint and foam and everything that I have in one go, I would be, I honestly, I'd be broke. Because it's a lot, it is a lot of money, but you do it over time, you buy bits and bobs, here and there, a little piece here and there, and you'll, you'll eventually have everything you need. But like I said, the paints, Mr. Price, they have uh, acrylic paints, just the big tubs of acrylic paint. They're cheapest chips and they, they last for ages because you're using very, very little on these projects. Like. Other bits and bobs in, things like, um, if you're getting into miniature painting, for example, you're painting these little guys. That's one place you can't skimp on the paint because your big tubs of acrylic paint you buy in, um, in a, a Mr. Price or whatever, they won't do these. They're, it's very, very fine pigment paste paint that they use. So you do have to spend a little bit of money on those, either Army Paint or a Games Workshop or any of those. Um, but again, you buy a couple of, like you buy a starter set of those, they'll have four or five inks in them. And that, those little pots will do so many minis. And then you add to them over time, you pop into Dungeon Donuts, pick up another one, they're like four euros, add a different color every other week or whatever you want to do. So over time, you don't need to spend a fortune in one go, just over time build it up. And then finally, uh, other bits and bobs I've picked up in the weirdest, some of the strangest places. Um, I was in, I think actually it was Mr. Price, and I was walking down the hardware aisle and I saw this thing that was uh, for to put in your gutter to stop leaves and junk getting into your, into your gutter. And if you look at the window here, that is that stuff in there. So you'll, find, you'll see stuff and once you've been crafting for a little while, you kind of go, that will work in this project I'm doing and you, and you pick it up. And again, that roll was like, it was less than a fiver. And, it's, and, and there's so much, and there's enough of that roll to probably do a city of windows if I wanted to. Um, and then ideas, of course, the internet, YouTube. I don't know if any of you have ever watched any of these people on the, the internet, but they're incredibly talented individuals. Um, Black Magic Craft, the guy that works that, his name is Jeremy. He has in his house this massive room, it's probably the size of this place, for crafting, just for crafting. He has another room in his house for his game, where he plays his games. This guy has a big house, right? He's a huge space, he has these 130 euro foam hot wire cutters called from, from a company called Proxon. He has all the tools, but he has a series of videos on his channel for the basics, for how to do the basics, how to do the little, these little terrain tiles and stuff like that. And he does them with very few tools. So he shows like you don't need a ton of tools. You don't need to spend a fortune on this stuff. And you can make some really, really impressive stuff. Um, 
Dean Scotty, while that's Army and RP Archive are all very, very similar. Ravenstead hasn't got a lot of videos up, just started I, a couple of months ago. I think I've only seen a few of his videos, very similar again. He, he's a little bit, um, I think a little bit rougher than the other guys. He uses like a pocket knife for cutting the foam and stuff like that. He doesn't have all the professional tools, but he does really good work because, and the same, and the same is true with minis. The painting does an awful lot of your heavy lifting when it comes to crafting. When you're doing what they call washes and dry brushes, they're the heavy lifters because they'll, they'll hide a huge amount of your blemishes. And this is what I was saying about you don't need a lot of artistic skill when you're just picking a brush and watered down paint all, all, all over to give it a, a washed out effect. It just, and, it, and it makes it look amazing. Nerdforge is at the bottom there. That lady, uh, I think uh, she's Danish. I think she's Danish or Swedish, one of those, Scandinavian. She is an artist on every single level. This girl paints, this girl sculpts, she does leather work, she does everything. Watching her channel make you, I'm not able to do any of this. And that's true for a lot of those. If you be looking at it going, they have skills that I'll never have. But the point is, you'll get ideas from it. You'll get a technique. From one video, you'll watch it, she's making a diorama the size of this, the house. And you're going, there's no way I can make something like that. But you don't need to, you just watch what she does and go, ah, oh, I like the way she does that, little, the way she cuts the phone there. That's brilliant, I'm gonna take that, you know? So you take little ideas from them. And sometimes you get ideas for your own projects. You might have a pile of stuff and you're thinking, what will I make with this? And you watch a video and go, oh yeah, I'll make a little guardhouse or a little gates or something like that. And you'll get your ideas from those. So that's what I've done. And pretty much anything you see here, most of the stuff here has been uh, copied off someone online, most of it. Uh, the, the church is from my own head, but it's a church, so you know, how much originality do you need? Uh, so things like that. So what I'll do now is I'll just go show you really quickly how easy it, is, it can be to make um, a project. Now, I meant to bring this project with me, but I didn't, but yeah, you'll see a picture. So that's what I was talking about. That's the Kingsman foam. That's a part of the sheet. I, haven't, I still haven't used it up. I still have a load of the sheet left. And this is what I was talking about earlier as well, about how this stuff can lead to serious woodworking although it's not very serious. That box, that toolbox in the back there, I made that as well. So it can, it can lead to serious work. So you get your, th your thermal, or your um, XPS foam. You put it out. So this is the project I was going to do. This little tower here. It's a magic item that one of my players picked up uh, while we were playing. It's a small in one inch cube, and I can't remember the name of it. Would you instant fortress. Thank you. You throw it out and it becomes this fortress. Now, when I was looking at that, I was thinking to myself, I do not have the skill to make those uh, gargoyles, whatever you're going to call them, those embellishments on the top, or these on the thing here. So I thought, I'm going to make an approximation of this tower. I'm going to pretend it was made by a different mage um, or artificer and, uh, and go with that. So cut out my rough pieces of foam. I knew someone in the room would know that. Peels the foam. This, this is the paint bit. So you can see the foil there peeled off. Those, it literally takes, about, it less, takes less than five minutes to peel it all off. It's fine. Um, Cut them into smaller pieces. You can see the hot glue gun there. Hot glue gun you'll pick up in Mr. Price. They're cheap as chips and the sticks in Mr. Price as well. They're a couple of euro for like a box of like 10 of them. So they're, they're not expensive. That's the hobby knife I was talking about though. I spent a little bit of money on that one. Um, but again, not a huge amount, but it's well worth it. And hot glue it together, the four sides. Does the foam pieces, uh, does the like the crumbles get out? Or you can, you'll get a little bit depending on how you're working it. So what I do, once I have the foil off, I didn't actually sew it there, and, I, and thank you because I'd forgotten. I actually bring it outside and I sand it down with, with, a, with, a, with a really fine sandpaper just to get the, any excess glues off it. And that can create a bit of dust. And then you'll come back in and you'll forget to shaking yourself off and that'll get around the place. But when it's cut and, and, and like that, not really, no, it doesn't, it doesn't flick apart like aeroboard. Because XPS is, is, is different from your other aeroboard has those tiny little balls and they get everywhere if you're doing anything with it. XPS foam is extruded polystyrene, so it's, it's, it's much denser, and that's why it can hold um, contours when you put onto it. So if you get a, if you get a piece of foam and a bunched up bit of tin foil, and you roll it on the foam, it gives this wonderful rock texture. Once you paint it, it looks like stone. Um, you see it on the ones over there, I'll show them to you in a while. Uh, so no, that's, that's usually not, not, not a problem with them, as long as you do the, 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 those bits outside. And remember to kind of shake yourself off before coming back inside. So yeah, just a few, uh, four more pieces of foam, cut a bit off them and stuck it on there in the corners. Then with an X-Acto knife, just basically just carved that out, out of it, cut other smaller pieces of foam and stuck them along, again with just hot glue, and then cut out the window shapes. Now you will notice on the window shape up here, I made an absolute hames of that window. And what happened was, 
And this is the whole thing. You see the, my Dremel type tool up there that I got in, again, I got that Naldi for like 15 quid, I think it was, or something. Um, when I was cutting out the window with it, I lost concentration and, and the bit just went zip. And it's foam, it's not a very, very hard material. So it literally just took a huge chunk out of it. So I was like, okay, this is, I don't want to start again. So I cut out a bit, cut out another piece of foam and hot glued that in there to, 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 to cover it up. And I'll show you what I did with that later as well. One of the things I got, I think was, in, yeah, it was Mr. Price. I got a set of, there was lollipop sticks, there was coffee stirrers, and there was tongue depressors in a pack. And I've used those in so many different projects. That is a, a tongue depressor, I think they call it. Uh, nurse, yes, that's what they call those sticks, yeah. And I've marked it one half inch. I've cut the ends off it because they're rounded ends. Cut the ends off it to be, to be square. And then just half inch increments. And it's a handy little ruler because if you're trying to do it with a really good straight edge ruler, which is great for measuring and for holding a straight edge, it can be awkward when you're trying to measure on a small piece of foam. So this little guy gives me half inch increments to, that make it just a little bit easier to do that. Um, then, I used a compass to draw on these, um, these lines here, which I was going to embellish later. Another piece of foam, stripped it down, cut it at 45 degrees angles off it, just cut a hole in it on the top to light out, and hot glued that on. These four pieces then I cut into battlement shapes, do you know, the, uh, crel crel crelinations, I think? the right word for them, and stuck them to the top here. Now this is where my, my son got into cra is, is into crafting as well as six, and one of the things he got, because he saw someone on YouTube doing it, um, north of the border, I think they're called, uh, air drying clay. Uh, so he got a couple of packs of air drying clay, so I robbed a bit of that. And this, I've never done this before, but I used it to fill in these gaps, right, where I had to replace the foam and stuff. So if you have, all the money in the world and you buy yourself a Proxon, hot wire, foam cutter and all that kind of stuff, you will, and you're using a fence, you'll get these lovely straight edges, 90 degrees everywhere, it'll be perfect. If you're doing it with your eye and a knife, it's not going to be perfect. So you are going to have little gaps. But with, I found with this clay, filled it all up. And this is something, if you watch, spend any time watching the guys on YouTube, you'll hear this a lot, Mod Podge and black paint. So Mod Podge is a PVA-based glue type thing, but it has other ingredients as well, like varnishes and stuff. Mix that with uh, black paint. And it gives you a thing that you put on your projects that solidifies the project, holds any small pieces that might come off it, holds them together, but also gives you a base coat for painting. And, and obviously, if you're painting something, you say, well, I don't want this. This is going to be a bright colored thing. You might not want to base it in black. Just make a small batch of whatever color you want and Mod Podge. And the Mod Podge holds it together, and you have your base coat. So you can see here as well, I've started putting the silver paint on because this tower is made of adamantine. Expert. <laughs> Something like that. So I wanted to have a sort of metally look. So silver paint. <coughs> it took a couple of coats. So you can see it here. It's, that's one coat kind of on. The second coat is on. And then I went back in with a sort of a rust color. Uh, I think it's called de desert effect. And I did a, a, a technique called dry brushing. Now all dry brushing is is where you put paint on your brush and then take most of the paint off your brush again and then lightly brush. And all it does is it hits kind of the high spots of your project and gets those details to pop out. So that's a light brushing of that to give it sort of a, almost like a lightly rusted effect. And then finish that off with a black wash. So black wash was, is literally just black paint, water, and a little bit of dish uh, washing up liquid to give it a uh, washing up liquid makes paint run a little bit better. So it'll run into those cracks and run into the holes. And you will notice it does not have fancy gargoyles and it does not have fancy snake type patterns on the sides. I just did a nice simple. Now I haven't finished, I need to do a little bit more with the door probably more of this stuff. And essentially that is it, that was the project. Didn't sit at that and do it in one go, that's over several days leaving it aside to dry and going back to it another day and stuff like that. But the next time we're playing, or the next time he hasn't, he hasn't, he hasn't used this object yet in the game, but the next time he says, oh, I'm gonna take out my cube and I'm gonna, I'm gonna activate it, I'm gonna go Doof, out on the table. And I'm hoping for a really nice, oh, oh my God, reaction. Because most of the stuff I've thrown out has gotten a good reaction. So again, it's not a big thing and it won't be used very often, but it's that elevating the story. It's just bringing it up a little bit. It allows them to say, oh, we're going inside, we're going to go up on the roof and shoot spells and arrows down on the enemies. That's all I'm hoping for. And that's why we do it. But I have found with crafting to be fun, I find it incredibly rewarding and I actually find it really, really re relaxing as well. It's a lovely ho hobby to do. Uh, this is up on the table here as well. You can have a look in a, in a minute. And this is from, uh, a, I made this even though it was a possible 
encounter in Call of the Netherdeep. It was one of those roll the dice, they might come across this crashed wagon. And I thought, hey, cool, I'm going to try and make a crashed wagon. So I went online, couldn't find any videos for a crashed wagon, but I found somebody made tents and stuff. And I thought, all right, I'm robbing that idea for the tent. And all, the, all that is, is very similar to the other build. It's very simple, very simple. Suddenly it's doing other things. Very simple, it's just cardboard, most of it. Or some of it rather, cardboard, cut in circles, paper, glued together. Lollipop sticks, like I said before, glued them together in that shape. Um, the, the interesting part is definitely this, because when you see it up close, it actually does look really good. And all it is is 240 gram, pa or 240 gram paper, 200 gram paper, cut into a, a shape that bends nicely into that, into that section to look like that, and three other bits then to look like the ribs. <coughs> and then, believe it or not, toilet paper. Toilet paper and kitchen towel and stuff like that is actually a brilliant, brilliant uh, material for crafting because it allows you to make uh, rocks, it allows you to make canvas stuff, look and stuff like that. And all it is is the toilet paper put on it, it's wet slightly with a mixture of the PVA, the white PVA glue and water. And then when it, when it solidifies, it gives that lovely, almost a canvas-like effect. Little pieces of cardboard painted silver for the, the, the supports and stuff like that and the wheel hubs. Now, it was funny, when I was making the crates, I made this crate first, which is made with coffee stirs, and I was like, oh, this is huge, <laughs> this is far too big, like, so I thought, ah, one big crate is fine, and then I just made two more, which, again, XPS foam, carried with an X-Acto knife, and then I just used the very, very tip of the X-Acto knife, very gently on the edges of it to give it that sort of wooden grain effect, um, and you can do that with any kind of wood as well, you can even, any kind of sharp edge, I also use a tweezers, because I have a tweezers that has two little points on it, and it does two lines at the same time, so it's slightly more efficient. Um, but little things like that, and you'll pick them up as you go along. Um, and then the other things then, you can experiment, and you can do stuff that, and use things the way they weren't meant to. There's a guy on Patreon called Printable Heroes, and he does these things. And he does, a lot of them you can get for free. And you just print them on 200 gram paper, fold them, cut them out, fold them over, cut out the bases, and glue them all together with print stick. And they make, they're, 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 like if you sat at a table and your DM had a load of those, fantastic, that's great. You, don't even, you can do that and a whiteboard and you've still got something cool to represent what the players are seeing. So it's awesome. Like, I did the twig lights and I discovered you can actually click a little thing on the PDF and it puts the black around black and it makes the things pop a little bit more. And then I thought, well, what if I could make them a little bit more 3D again? And I made this guy. So that can represent your spiritual weapon. It can represent a cursed weapon. It can represent several different things. Uh, even if your player says, I'm going, to use, I'm going to use spiritual weapon, but it's going to be a giant lollipop. No critical role fans. Okay, interesting. Um, so what I did different with that one, instead of just printing it out, folding it over, and sticking it to the base, and away you go, I cut it out and cut it apart, stuck it to a bit of uh, uh, XPS foam, painted that black, and stuck it to a little bit of a tongue depressor, and painted that black. And it just gives it a little bit more... 3D effect almost. It's just a little bit thicker and it's a little bit nicer on the table. So there's a few more of these and we'll, we'll move on in. So again, did the same thing with the doors, the chests and the bookshelf. XPS foam with a bit of a pillow my dog tore to pieces, uh, painted red. It doesn't look realistic flames. You know what I mean? It doesn't. But your players are going to look at that and go, they know that's not a, a cold brazier. They know that's meant to be flames coming out of it. It's pretty obvious. Um, the minis under there as well, you can see are just... They're all bought minis and just painted. Mini painting is slightly different. Also a lot of fun. And like I said, you need the proper paints for it. But again, when I was saying about washes, um, with minis, washes and contrasts are your friends. They cover up so many mistakes. You don't need to be talented. You don't need to be artistic to paint reasonably well. Um, the cage there is just, again, it's just coffee stirs, painted silver, and a bit of, again, a bit of the rust to give it a, a cage look. Uh, you can have a look at that over there as well. So there's just a few of these, some more minis, uh, undead ones. And this is another thing we're talking about not spending money. My wife bought me them for Christmas. So, you know, you can always just say to your significant others and friends or whoever buying your presents saying, I want uh, a nice set of minis or I want some foam or I want a tool or and you save a few quid that way. These are wooden tile floors, um, dungeon tiles made with, the, with that same wood effect, um, with the same XPS foam. You can see all these are up here as well. Um, now, this is an interesting one, I think. 
Desert and kale, cave are fine. They're, they're grand. They're just representational. They're grand. The grasslands one is literally just flocking grass. I bought, I think it was a tenner, and I thought I was buying a bag of grassing or flocking, what they call flocking grass. It was actually three bags. So, and I've used like less than half a bag, and I've still got a ton of it left. And, and I'm, I'm trying to think of projects to use it on, but that's just scattered on this. Just literally just get your PVA glue and slather it on, and then just pour, throw the grass on it. I would love to buy, if I had the money, I would buy a static grass applicator. It's a little thing that has a battery in it, and you connect it, you stick a pin in your, PV, in your uh, XPS foam, you attach this little clip to it, and when you scatter it down onto the glue, the static makes the little piece of plastic grass stand up. So it gives an actual, looks like standing up grass. It's absolutely amazing. So I'm hoping to get that someday. And again, over time, I picked up little things like those tufts of grass, and my team, my Dungeons & Dragons group, when we finished, we finished Lost Mines of Fandelver, they actually bought me a terrain kit uh, from the Army Painter, which had little tufts of grass and stuff like that, and then these little, little pieces of cork that look like wood. So they're, they're, you just use them every now and again, and they're amazing. And, and, and over time, I picked up some other ones as well, some other little bits of, of, of grass and stuff, the bright green ones and stuff. So like I said, you pick them up over time, you add to your collection over time, and you build up your projects over time. And you start getting your own ideas as well, which I, I, which I love. Um, I did this one. This is a, like a fountain for a village square or a town square or what, what have you. You can see it there. This is, made, this is not made from XPS foam. Surprise. It's actually made from something they call foam core, which you can also pick up in Mr. Price in, in smaller sheets. It has paper on either side. You'd see the guys on the internet using this, the American guys, and what they do is they, they just go, you just peel the paper off. But they, the Irish ones are wherever we get the ones in Ireland, you can't do that with them. The, the paper just, just doesn't peel off. You have to leave it in the sink, like a little floating in water for a little while, and then it kind of comes off then. So it's a little bit more work again, but it's thinner, and it's, 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 it's great for smaller projects like this. Um, that's resin in there. That was an expensive, uh, expensive enough experiment. It was like 12 quid. Thank you. It was 12 quid for a, a double tube of, the, of that resin stuff, just to give it a kind of a water effect. Um, and in a, in, a, in, a fount in a fountain like this, it's just going to be sitting there static. It's fine. If I want to, if I was making like a river effect, you put a, you'd do this, and then you put some PVA glue on it and blow it with a straw, and it would give sort of wave movement effect to it. And it's really, really simple. I left the top bit. It's connected via a very, very uh, complicated system called a toothpick and a hole. And it just pops in. And the reason I left that is because I may want to use it as a puzzle. So I can pop a mini down this and have a clue somewhere in the village saying, the hero always looks to the north or something along those lines. And then when they look at the hero, the statue on the thing, they might think, well, which way is he looking? And the DM says, well, he's looking to the south. And then they go over and they can turn it and the door opens or whatever it happens to be. So that's little things like that. They're, most of that is my own, some stolen, some my own idea. Um, how are we looking? We've gone over a little bit, but we're nearly there. Thanks for bearing with me. So these are just similar projects. That's a little uh, blacksmith's forge made with a tea light. Again, the same sort of foam core. Tea light underneath the tea lights. Who can guess where I bought tea lights? <laughs> Got a pack of like five or six of them for, for a couple of quid. So this little tea light inside it gives it a fire effect. Little stones. Um, that was in the, the kit my group bought me, scattered around it, glued onto a PVA, then painted yellow, and then a really light dry brush, like I was saying, with, with red to give it that fire effect. And then the roof and the roof on that and the roof on this, all the roofs are cardboard from like, um, what do you call them, cereal boxes or tea bag boxes, whatever you have lying around. And all you do is you cut them into strips, long strips, and then you cut them like at, at half inch intervals. And then you go back over with the scissors and just cut out random little bits off the ends so that it kind of gives it that uneven slate tile look. And then you just glue them on rows and rows and rows and rows. And the top one's just a simple pinned over row left on top. And, that's, and that's, that's, that's it. There are more complicated ways of doing it. I've seen some of the crafters doing it with individual slates. Um, but like, who has time for that? But you know, again, if you want, absolutely do it that way. Uh, this is the same, same idea. The well has um, resin inside to look like water. And again, that's a toothpick for the handle painted silver. And this is what I'm saying. The paint and stuff like that will make it, will change how you see something. It's like, oh yeah, that's, that's obviously uh, stonework. <laughs> that's obviously stonework. That's again, that's just XPS foam. Uh, three layers of it stuck on top of each other, cut out into pillars. You can actually see where the three layers are glued together. Uh, on that from there, but again, once it's painted up, it just looks like a bit of thick mortar between the, between the blocks. And on the bottom of them, the screw. 
stuck in just to give it a little bit of weight. It's not, um, you know, it's not hugely expensive. I was talking to a guy the other day, an Argentinian, who says he uses uh, pesos. He has Argentinian pesos that are useless. He just sticks, the, he cuts a little hole in the thing and sticks the pesos in there. So you can do that as well. If you have a pile of coppers lying around the house, you can use them. So um, this one I didn't bring with me, uh, but that's just a building I built. And after I built it, I was happy enough with the way it came out, the brickwork and stuff like that. I was happy enough with the paint job, everything. What I was disappointed with, it, and, and this is the thing, when you're not, like these guys, again, these YouTube guys, they can do 20 of these and, and, and show you the best edit. But I, I you know, don't have that time. And what I was, I was kind of looking at it afterwards, like, oh, I made these bits too thick. Like, that's way beyond health and safety uh, requirements, like, whereas the balcony above it is way below. You trip over that very easily, like. Um, and I was kind of disappointed with the way that these logs came out here. But again, if I had that on the table, my players sitting around the table, they're not going to sit down and go, you know what, I'm not playing with you anymore. Look how thick you made those beams. They're, that's, that's rubbish, I'm going home. They're not going to do that. They're going to love the fact that you've gone to the trouble of doing this for your table, you know? Um, we're nearly there. That's it. Um, like I said, it is a slippery slope. Be very careful if you do start getting into crafting because you will end up making all sorts of stuff like the dice tower, the mace there. That, that's made of paper, by the way. That's entirely made out of paper. It's just a, a, a print out the plans offline, online. You cut them out and you glue it together and it makes that. Um, and then the little, it's our house that's here as well. Uh, the banana is incredibly real. That's just there for scale. Um, <laughs> So some of these pictures I took specifically for this, other ones I took off my phone that I was sending other people, so this is kind of a mixture. Because uh, I've never done anything like this uh, for, for this kind of stuff before, so this was kind of thrown together. Uh, I just wanted to do something for AdventureCon, because I had a fair play to them for doing an AdventureCon, you know, and doing a con for it, so I thought I wanted to do something for that. Any questions, guys? The large podge, does it mm. come in a bottle? It comes in a bottle, yeah. You can get eight fluid ounces of bottles of it for about seven quid, I think. Um, my last bottle I bought was a 16, ounce, 16 fluid ounce bottle, and that was 13 euros. So it's not, an, it's not hugely expensive, and it goes a huge long way, because you're only really going to be using it for what I said of sealing your, your work. So it's just a, a coat on whatever you've made. Um, and the sheet of the... It's about 20 quid for the XPS sheet. Yeah, yeah it's about 20 quid. Now, I've seen, I've seen them on Amazon where you can buy like a, a pack of different size pieces of foam, they're not hugely expensive. You wouldn't make a massive amount of projects out of them because there's only you know, a handful of pieces of foam on it. But you would. It would definitely be enough to start. Uh, and the other thing as well, I, I don't know if I said this or not, is space. You don't need a massive amount of space. Um, like I said, I, I mentioned I have a six-year-old. I can hardly move in my house for Lego. So I don't have a massive amount of space. So I put everything out in the garden shed. Um, and then when I'm going to say, oh, I'm, going to make, I'm going to make something, I'll go out in the garden shed, get all the stuff in, start doing it. And then when it's like, oh, I've got to make dinner now, put everything back in the garden shed. It's a pain. But if you have a smaller space, it can, it can still be done. Don't be worried if you're like in an apartment. Just find a corner that you can store your stuff and then take it in and out when, when, when you need to. Um, so it can be done. And you know that adamantium tower or whatever mm -hmm. it was you showed? Now, I know it's a hobby anyway, but how many hours would you estimate Rough. it took to do that? Uh, that's, that's a good question. Um, roughly, I'd say, I mean, like I said, I didn't do it in one go. It was about 10 hours, okay. roughly. Because um, it, it took me a while. I, was, I think... I, a good portion of that was me sitting looking at that piece of paper going, oh, in the name of God, am I going to do this? Um, but yeah, once I got going, then I was like, oh, yeah, yeah I'll do this. And that. So if anybody wants to, feel free to come up and have a look. And, and you can ask me any questions about any of the pieces you see here. Um, uh, you're more than welcome to.